Okay, let's continue with our second example problem. Uh, in this problem, we have a continuous beam, fixed, fixed ends, but this time the half of the beam is stronger than the other half. The first AB member has two EI, the other one has EI, and we have a uniformly distributed load on it. Remember that we already solved this problem by using the slope deflection method. Now let's solve it with the general stiffness. As a starting point, we have to do the discretization. So let's start with it. Let's divide the structure into members and nodes. So node A, member AB. Now node B is discontinuous because the section properties of that member changes. So we have a no, have to define a node at B and member BC and node C. So basically here we have two, uh, two members and three nodes. Now at node A there is no degrees of freedom. Node B we have translation. Let's call it delta B and we have rotation theta B. Now the rotation will be my first degrees of freedom, so I'll just call it V1. And the translation will be the second degrees of freedom, I call it D2. So here we got three nodes, two members, and two degrees of freedoms, which means that I have to come up with two equilibrium equations. Now, the force vector. Let's determine that. In order to obtain the force vector, we have to do superposition. So this is our original structure. So let's sketch it like that. So step one, or the first case, is no deformation case. All degrees of freedoms are equal to zero. Remember that this is also our starting point in the moment distribution method. There are no deformations. So member AB, member BC, and node C. Let's show the forces. I have a member load, 10 kilonewton meters, another member load. Now when we calculate the fixed end moments, so this one is 20.83. So the moments are as follows, 20.83. I got the same fixed end moments here. Now let's calculate the shear forces. So here it's 25, 25, and same here. So these are the forces when there are no deformations. Now, case two is we have the effect of only deformations. We calculate the effect of nodal deformations only. How much force will it create on that structure? So this is the whole structure. Now, as you see, here I have 20.83 in the clockwise direction, 20.83 in the counterclockwise direction. When I transfer it to that node, they cancel out each other. So basically, when there are no deformations, there are no unbalanced moments. But we have unbalanced shear forces here, 25 and 25, if they are in the upward direction. So when I transfer the opposite sign in here, the unbalanced shear force will be equal to 50 kilonewtons. So the structure should deform in such a way that it should generate a 50 kilonewton at this node B so that it will balance these two unbalanced shear forces. Now remember that by looking at the second case we determine our force vector. Now the first degrees of freedom is rotation, 
we don't have any moment corresponding to that degrees of freedom so it's zero the second degrees of freedom is translation and we choose the translation to be the positive direction of the translation to be in the plus y direction the unbalanced force in the minus y direction so this is minus 50 because they are in the opposite direction so this is the force vector now I have to figure out the stiffness coefficients remember that the stiffness coefficients or the stiffness matrix is the property of the structure it doesn't change with the loading and in order to determine the stiffness coefficients we just do this case 1 the first degrees of freedom is equal to unity whereas all other degrees of freedoms is equal to zero so what kind of a deformation we get and what are the corresponding forces to this deformation this is what we are calculating here so let's draw the free body diagram for this given deform shape member a b node b member b c and node c so what we are doing is we apply a moment it's k11 and I apply a shear k21 k11 will create a unit rotation while k21 keeps the translation equal to zero so that's the way we will define the following deform shape d1 is equal to 1 d2 is equal to 0 so this rotation is equal to 1 they are all in counterclockwise direction so that's the deform shape that we see now let's figure out the stiffness coefficients mm -hmm. so I'm using the slope deflection equation here that moment will be equal to 4 times 2 EI divided by length of the member we put it in the slope deflection equation theta d is equal to 1 the rest of the degrees of freedom are equal to 0 so what I see here is 8 a moment that's equal to 8 EI over 5 on the other side at point A I see another moment 4 EI over 5 I also need to calculate the shear forces so I take moment with respect to that point, that point A. So the shear force that will be balancing the applied moments is in the downward direction. And the magnitude of it is equal to 12 EI divided by 25. So for the other, the second member, this moment is equal to 4 EI over 5. The far end moment is equal to 2 EI over 5. And if I take moment with respect to point C, the direction of the shear force should be in the upward direction and its magnitude should be equal to 6 EI divided by 25 so we calculated all the member forces I need to transfer them to the nodes so these are the moments and the shear forces are in the upward direction at the node and then I have to write down the nodal equilibrium equation so from the nodal equilibrium equation I get k11 as equal to 8 EI over 5 coming from the member AB plus 4 EI over 5 coming from member BC so the total stiffness in other words the total moment required to create a unit rotation at D would be equal to 12 EI divided by 5 now what is the force required to keep the translation equal to zero when we have a unit rotation so I, for that I will write down the shear equilibrium at node B and from that 
think I make a mistake in the directions. This one should be in the downward direction, not in the upward direction. So let me erase this part so that we don't confuse it. Yeah, we don't have this. That force should be in the downward direction. Yes. Okay. Now, K21 is equal to minus 12 EI divided by 25 plus 6 EI divided by 25. And then the final result is equal to minus 6 EI divided by 25. So this is the first row of the stiffness, sorry, first column of the stiffness coefficients. Now the other column is can be calculated from case 2. In case 2, this time, rotation is equal to 0, d1 is equal to 0, but translation is equal to 1. So let's draw the free body diagram for this case. So let's put the forces. Now I apply K22 to create a unit translation. And then I apply K12 to keep the rotation equal to 0. So the deformed shape, it will look like this. This translation is equal to 1. This one is also equal to 1. And that will be the deform shape okay now the question is how much force how much moment do I need to create a unit translation while keeping the rotation equal to zero so what we are going to do is we will be using the slope deflection equations this time we have a translation equal to unity so for this member the phi angle will be equal to, or the court rotation will be equal to 1 over phi. And it's in the counterclockwise direction, so we'll get a clockwise moment at this end. The magnitude of that moment, if you put it in the slope deflection equations, is equal to, oops, let me write it, this one is equal to 12 EI but of course I forget the fact that yes it's 12 EI over 25 I put 2 EI in here and this moment is 6 EI over 25 now the shear forces Again, I take moment with respect to point A, then that shear force will be equal to, sorry again, this should be 12. Yes, I always confuse this 2E, I think. Okay, the shear force, I take moment with respect to that point, it's equal to 24. EI over 125. The other side, that moment, and this will be the moment. Again, the court rotation is equal to 1 over 5, but it's in the clockwise direction. So I get a counterclockwise and moments. So this moment will be equal to 6 EI over 25. This one also equal to 6 EI over 25. And I take moment with respect to point C to calculate the shear force. And that shear force is equal to 12 EI divided by 125. So we calculated all the member forces for the given deformed shape. Let's transfer it to the node. So these are the shear forces. 
transfer for the moment this will be in that direction that 6ei will be in the counter in the clockwise direction now write down the nodal equilibrium k12 will be equal to minus 12ei over 25 plus 6 EI over 25 and that will give me 6 EI over 25 and K22 is equal to I sum up these forces I got 24 EI over 125 coming from member AB plus 12 EI over 125 coming from member BC and then the total stiffness or the force required to create a unit translation at node B would be equal to 36 EI over 125 now let's check if we calculate these coefficients accurately now let's remember the properties of the stiffness matrix the off diagonals must be equal to each other so k21 must be equal to k12 and yes they are this is 6 ei over 25 and 6 ei over 25 they are the same the other property is all the diagonals must be positive this value is a positive value this value is a positive value and also not only that all the contribution coming from the each member must be all positive this is all the contributions are positive so what we are doing looks okay for now let's do the solution now now the equilibrium equations is written as follows the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacements unknown displacements should give me the unbalanced forces this is matrix vector and the vector so the stiffness matrix if I take it into EI parentheses is 2.4 minus 0 0.24 minus 0 0.24 and 0 0.288 so the first degrees of freedom is the rotation the second one is the translation and that should give me the force unbalanced force vector 0 and minus 50 so when I solve that system of linear equations I get the rotation as equal to minus 18.94 divided by EI and the translation is equal to minus 189.4 divided by EI so this is the unknown degrees of values of the unknown degrees of freedom now the analysis doesn't end here now I have to calculate the membrane forces so I will do it for member AB and as I said before you can always use the slope deflection equations uh, to calculate it now you know what the translation is you know what the rotation is put it in the slope deflection equations find out the actual end moments and use the equilibrium equations and the free body diagrams to calculate the shear forces but instead I will again be using the stiffness approach to do that so membrane forces so let's draw member AB one more time this is node A so I got node B here and what I know for node B is I got two degrees of freedom theta B and delta B and I know the value of delta B and theta B right now and at the start node 
there is no deformation. Now, in order to figure out how much moment does this two deformation create, I have to consider this. Let me bullet, put it into bullet. This free body diagram and this free body diagram. As you see, I have all the coefficients I need here. So when there is a unit translation, unit rotation, these are the end moments. So if I want to calculate the end moment and end forces due to theta b, all I need to do is to multiply this one with these coefficients. But we don't only have rotation, but we only have a translation. And take a look at these coefficients. These coefficients will tell me the member and forces when there's a unit translation. So if I multiply the total translation with these coefficients, I get the member and forces due to translation. So combining these two will give me the forces due to deformations. So I calculate the forces due to deformation. And plus, I have to add the forces when there is no deformation. And that should give me the final membrane force. So if I want to write it in equation form, so it's like that, membrane force AB is equal to the stiffness coefficient AB multiplied by the displacement and displacements of AB plus the fixed end force AB. Okay, so basically what I did here is I just write everything that I described in equation form. Now let's write down the stiffness matrix for member AB. And here remember that I got theta B and delta B. Okay. So when there is rotation, get the laser pointer, the rotation will create a moment, a unit rotation will create a moment that's equal to ATI over 5. So I have Let's write EI here so that it will be simple. 8 over 5. When there is a translation, a unit translation, the moment created at this end is equal to 12 EI over 25. But it's in the clockwise direction. So I should have minus 12 over 25 here. So 8 over 5 EI multiplied by theta B minus 12 EI over 25 multiplied by delta B will give me the end moment due to deformations plus the fixed end moments and or the fixed end forces. So let's take a look at this free body diagram now. When there are no deformation I see a clockwise moment that's equal to 20.83 so I have if I can write it here minus 20.83 let's do the same thing for the shear force again I'm looking at this free body diagram when there is a rotation, I have the shear force in the downward direction, whose magnitude is 12 EI over 25. So I have minus 12 over 25 here. And when there is a translation, the shear force is in the upward direction, and its magnitude is 24 EI over 125. So I got 24 over 125 here and when there is no deformation again I see a shear force that is in the upward direction so I should have plus 25 
here. So when in, in order to calculate the shear force, what I'm doing is 12 e, minus 12 EI over 25 multiplied by theta B plus 24 EI over 125 multiplied by delta B plus 25 should give me the, the final shear force. So F AB is equal to when you do that calculations you obtain it as the end moment at B is equal to 39.78 and the shear force at B is equal to minus 2.27 so if I want to draw the moment the force diagram for member AB or the free body diagram for member AB let's write it here let's use this space So member AB, I have a uniform distributed load on it, that's point A, that's point B. So at point B, the moment is equal to 39.78, it's in the counterclockwise direction. 39.78 kN meters, and the shear force is minus 2.27, meaning that it's in the downward direction. 2. 27 kilonewtons and if you want to calculate the reaction forces you will use equilibrium equations and if you use the equilibrium equations this reaction force will be equal to 52.27 kilonewton and the moment would be equal to 96.57 kilonewton meters so that finalizes our solution you can do, repeat the same thing for member BC calculate the member and forces so once we obtain all the member forces the analysis is complete